Hey there, gamers. I'm Pruitt, uh, and I'm trying to convince Jim right now uh, on something. Just hang on just a second. Jim, trust me, dude. Mm -mm. Fail nope. forward in the nope. title is probably the best thing we can do. It's business jargon. It, yeah. I hate it. Uh, hard no. Nope. No. Nope. No, nope. it, but the SEO, it's got alliteration. Okay, you know what? No, just I don't care. I have no. a sack full of uh, of gold and silver right here. Uh, wait, is that? Uh -huh. You mean Electrum? Yeah. You got some uh -huh. dwarf Electrum there? Yeah, oh. yeah, a little bit of it. Uh, I can should, PayPal you this. I, uh -huh. You should have led with uh -huh. that. Yeah. Oh, all right, okay. All right, yeah, no. All right. Fork it all over. Right. All right, okay. All right, all right. I give in. All right, all right. we're going to do it then. Right. Okay. Hey, <sighs> guess what, people? That's how you fail better. That's how you fail forward into this episode of WebDM. This episode is brought to you by Dungeon Fog's Project Dios Alpha 2, live now. Project Dios sets out to revolutionize map making by creating a bundle of tools with tabletop role-playing in mind. Create your interconnected worlds, regions, cities, and battle maps, with everything from political borders to climate boundaries to interactive objects. It's never been easier to create maps for any kind of game. Don't miss out. Link in the description. Okay, Jim. Today, we want to find a better way to fail, a better way yeah. to move forward in the face of defeat. So let's, let's yes. try to teach these people, teach these people out in the world how to mm -hmm, fail mm -hmm. forward. No, we don't like that phrase, but for, to fail better. To, failure shouldn't be the end. I don't it shouldn't, know. It shouldn't. What do you, what do you, what do you think? <laughs> Yeah, I, I think that a lot of, uh, of gamers are conditioned to, um, you know, see failure in an RPG as simply just nothing happened. You know, the dice came up, uh, duds, and, you, you know, you move on. Yeah, it's binary. Um, and, right, you know, binary outcomes. And there's a lot of RPGs that, that try to, like, work in non-binary uh, out resolution outcomes in their mechanics, and they're fun. You can learn a lot from them. Um, but... The, the principle that I always try to adhere to, regardless of the system I'm using and regardless of the kind of gameplay I have, is that whenever the resolution mechanic is used, whether that's a die roll or whatever, that something mm -hmm. happens, right? That, that the situation changes. The context in which the players are making decisions changes. And even if the task or whatever that the, the player was trying to accomplish doesn't succeed in the way that they want to, that the outcome isn't mm -hmm. just nothing happens and and the purpose of this is to avoid stalling out the game right the the mm -hmm. classic like oh you missed the clue or you didn't pick the lock or whatever that then the adventure can't continue um trying to avoid that but also trying to avoid like undermining uh, a player's conception of their character uh or, or you know not wanting to reinforce incompetence by reading a mm -hmm. failed die roll as like lack of skill on the character's part and so yeah. i try to keep um you know these principles in mind whenever uh you know any task whether it's a single die roll or a larger endeavor that the players are undertaking uh in mind whenever it comes up as a as a fail because failure in rpgs is really interesting <laughs> and, and a yeah, lot yeah. of times much more satisfying than success well yeah because if the party gets to the dungeon and there is a door to the dungeon that is locked. And the thief steps up and rolls a one. And you're just standing there like, well, let's go home, guys. Like, no, nobody wants that, right? No, nobody cares. No. Nobody, like, you're here to adventure. And so, right. yeah, like, maybe you don't get it right away, but you make a lot of noise. Or maybe now it's time for the fighter to come in. Like, you're going to, like, you should be able to get through that door, is what I'm saying. Right. And that door... Yeah could be an actual physical door or it could just be the impediment that they are at at that moment but not every yeah, door yeah. needs to stay closed right certainly yeah 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 door door in this sense is is a a way to an, a goal right like like you're saying it could be a literal door um but it could also be just a a path an avenue uh, yeah. uh towards a particular outcome and so to stick with the example like yeah you get to the adventure the door is locked um presumably it's locked for a reason right like the the fact that it is locked uh, says something about the place it presents some sort of challenge or obstacle and like if you can't mm -hmm. get past that initial obstacle the principle i keep in mind is is that you didn't get past it in the way that you want it and that's it 
everything else is up for uh, negotiation. It doesn't mean that like you didn't get in because then we're not playing an adventure. We might as well go home. But it could mean like it's going to cost you something or there's uh, a, a, an alternative route that opens up that you would prefer not to have used or not to have gone down. Um, but mm -hmm. now you have to. You're sort of forced to. And again, the situation has changed. It's not that nothing happens. It is simply that the way <laughs> that you wanted to go forward with this, the the question you wanted answered when you rolled that die came up no but that doesn't mean we're gonna stop uh and so mm -hmm. uh, you know when this kind of thing happens and i am using this technique i'd be sure to, to really be explicit about it like yes the way that you wanted to proceed forward isn't going to work trust me there are other ways and then if it seems like the players are still stalling out that um that that prompts a question from my part of like what do you guys think of this what do you guys think about the situation your characters are in what are your thoughts on how you're going to proceed forward um because a lot of times i don't know what the alternative doors in this mm -hmm. case are going to be i'm just committed to the mm -hmm. principle that there are multiple ways to accomplish something in a game and that failure pursuing one of those options is not going to lead to nothing happens we might as well pack up and go home uh, most definitely, because this is when, you know, oh, the fighter has a crowbar. Well, guess what? You know, you you can, like like you said, it didn't happen the way you wanted. You wanted to quietly pick the lock. Because if there's a lock on a dungeon, somebody had to lock it. Therefore, ergo, somebody's probably there. Let's try to get in quietly. That doesn't happen. Now you're making right. noise. And trying to get in trying to get in this door well now you can definitely hear the guards on the other side of the door moving around and no now you're going to prepare for a fight whereas you could have snuck in and maybe you know tied them up knocked them out while they're still asleep and you still have the element of surprise so mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know knowing that you know that one path is not the only path yeah. is a good thing and it, it, it is something that yeah like you said D dm should always try to reinforce um yeah Certainly, certainly. So, uh, so uh, now, when thinking about uh, things other than an actual door, um, sure. like say, let's let's move on to like some kind of like a, like a social situation or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, you know, players want to get into a place; they are barred entry. Uh, now, do you sneak in and, and piss off the people that are at that place? Right. Do you bribe someone? Do you mm -hmm. <laughs> sneak yeah. around and find some information and blackmail them? Like, right. there are always <laughs> multiple paths to uh, yeah. to whatever you want. To whatever you want, yeah, yeah. The, the, thinking about it in terms of, of gaining access to a place is is instructive because it does offer a lot of examples here. In this situation, it's like, do you disguise yourself? Uh, it, you know, in failure in this case, does it mean that you are denied access to a place or is it that you are allowed access to a place, but that the conditions under which you got that access have changed? And so an example would be you're trying to sneak into a palace or some place, you know, where there's royalty or whatever, you know, um, a success would have meant you get in clean, no problems, no one's suspicious, you're supposed to be there, everything's fine and you can maneuver without concern but maybe you failed and now the guards are tailing you or they're, they're inquiring into you or uh you know yes you can get in but you're still denied access to these other places within the location right the whole point of all of this is just to change the context uh that the players are making decisions in without saying no nothing happened but guess again um and, mm -hmm. and because players are using information to uh you know make decisions and that information is based on the context of the game having that context constantly change and having new information so that the players are always kind of reimagining and reconsidering uh, is, is what gives a game dynamism and gives it sense of movement mm -hmm. and, and pace and, and being alive uh, and, and really keeps the players engaged. Uh, so yeah, finding a way to like ensure that there are alternate routes towards what the players want is is like the the number one thing about uh you know making sure that the game doesn't stall out <laughs> yeah most definitely um and uh and remember folks uh if you're looking for more information and dynamism in your games you can check us out on patreon where we have a whole nother podcast every week so a little bit more expansive than our, our weekly shows we we go a little bit longer but uh 
you should check that out over on Patreon. Um, it, so um, another way uh, that 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 DMs and GMs can kind of make that 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 situation a little more dynamic. Um, mm-hmm. It reminds me of like GM intrusions from uh, Cipher, but like like environmental or setting like mm-hmm. interference. You know, yeah. like where uh, y- y- something could just go wrong. There could be a, a trap. There could be a monster that springs up. It doesn't. It doesn't matter what it is, but just like an outside influence that comes in at that moment, and that is what disrupts you. Um, yeah, is yeah. is yeah. one of those things that I absolutely love. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I think the the temptation is for uh, for players and GMs to say the the dice came up null, no result. Uh, that must be because of my character. It must be because they're not good enough or they don't have the skills or whatever. And this is where I find that that repeated failure in uh, in resolution mechanics or or just, you know, something being too difficult or failing like at the wrong time can really undermine a character concept. Like it's useful to remember that it doesn't have to be about the character attempting the thing that that doesn't necessarily need to be the reason why the the attempt failed and that there are all kinds of things external to the character that could have caused that failure and because they're external to the character they complicate the situation they change the context they introduce new information so that sense of dynamism is changing you know to stick with the literal example of trying to get through a door maybe you didn't get through the door quietly because something came along and interrupted you right you heard something and, and paused mm-hmm. in your attempt to, uh, you know, to open the door. And in this sense, these uh, in- interferences are obstacles that need to be dealt with before the initial task can continue. You know, um, mm-hmm. I, I love uh, this sort of interpretation of failure and of framing failure in this way, because it lets me as the DM draw on all of the weird stuff that's going on in the background, all of the weird magic and monsters and hazards and, and, oh yeah, you just didn't know that then an NPC or, or an antagonist was working behind the scenes to, to hinder you. Uh, this is their moment to strike. Um, you know, mm-hmm. you mentioned, uh, GM intrusions uh, from Cypher and, and like, those are very inspirational in terms of like all the different ways that you can introduce complications that arise from the environment or the setting as a result of failure without it being like, oh yeah, your character sucks. <laughs> you know, like, they're, they're never you know gonna get past this because they just suck. <laughs> yeah. Should have stayed in college. That <laughs> right, no, right, uh. right. And, and like, this is how these techniques will build on, onto one another because an interference from the environment could also mean another path opens up. It could mean another, yeah. al- you know, an alternative path is revealed in some way. You know, uh, yeah. you're not going to get through this physical obstacle because it's tougher than you realized, or um, it, you know, what you initially thought about this door, this barrier, this whatever isn't true. Like your your initial perceptions of it were wrong, but mm-hmm. now you've learned something new about it yeah. and that information is something you can use later so thinking in terms of hazards traps monsters bad magic what the npcs are up to all of those things can complicate mm-hmm. a situation and explain the failure so that the die roll coming up negative doesn't mean that the player has to face the fact that their character sucks <laughs> which if there's one thing about gamer culture i would get rid of entirely it is the idea that when the dice don't come up in your play uh your favor that it represents something about your character uh and so i use this technique mm-hmm. a lot of, of having the setting or the environment uh explain the failure and complicate the situation yeah because if you're trying to get in that that dungeon door on a mountainside and all of a sudden there's a rock slide because some big monster comes out of its cave well if you deal yeah. with that monster well where does that cave go is that cave connected right. to this dungeon? Is that an alternate mm-hmm. path in once you deal with this? And that's how you get around this? Like, these are these are kind of the what we're talking about here is how you can, you know, a way to to present a challenge that, that then wraps around to another solution. Um, and um, um, so, yeah, uh, cost, that's one thing. Um, but but also a failed role mm-hmm. should... should um, put the pressure on the players 
Yeah. If oh, whatever yeah. they're doing, whether it's sneaking or climbing or whatever, like mm-hmm. there should be something uh, that 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 ramps up the pressure. And again, this is this is something from like GM Intrusions that I love is is kind of yeah. heightening the drama just a bit. Uh, so, yep. what are some of the ways that you can you can increase that pressure on your players to kind of give them that yeah give them that uh, that press that push <laughs> right? So, uh, some of the ways that I'm thinking of are like revealing a hidden danger. You know that 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 there's something lurking here, or some sort of threat that uh, the party was unaware of that failure reveals the presence of and and kind of like raises the stakes, increases the pressure. Um, mm-hmm. That could be something like. You know, you, you know that there is some creature in this stretch of wilderness that, you know, this is its hunting grounds. And, you know, you were trying to get through without anyone or, or this creature knowing about it. And failure results in, you know, it, its attention is now drawn towards your presence. It knows you're here and is now actively looking for you, right? Uh, or, or mm-hmm. you know, the the scene I'm, I'm kind of thinking of in, in uh, Fellowship of the Ring where they're, you know, the fellowships in Moria and they're trying to be quiet. Mm-hmm. They know something's here, you know. Uh, oh, okay. the, <laughs> they dug too deep and that, that uh-huh. fool of a took just has to go messing uh-huh. with something and cause a huge bunch of noise which draws in the, the goblins, you know. Um, yeah, he's too big of a Wu-Tang fan. He brought the ruckus. And, uh, he brought the that's ruckus. That's what happens. <laughs> right. Uh, if you're using a clock or some sort of, uh, you know, metagame mechanic to to represent these threats, tick that clock down, right? Like, let them know, yep, we, that's, that's another tick on that clock. Another, another bubble on this thing filled in as the looming threat mm-hmm. uh, grows ever closer. Um, but you can also use just sort of time pressure in, in, in classic Dungeons and Dragons, a failed attempt to, to do something means that you, you spend more time doing it. And that time has a cost. Every segment of time in an adventure location is a wandering monster role. It's, it's a, a roll on the hazard die to see what might happen. And so your choice to either continue down a, a particular uh, course of action after it's failed the first time is like... I, I, it's going to cost me time, which increases the pressure, right? It, it, it's another chance that you could get caught, another chance for a complication to arise. Um, you know, it, it, it might go smoothly, it might not. Um, but I find increasing the pressure is a good one to use if if uh, the players can uh, reattempt something that they failed at. But you don't want it to just result in that everyone takes a turn rolling the die or they just roll until they succeed or whatever. Oh, yes. which, it, like, right. To me, that's like you, you just don't have them roll in the first place if that's the case. But even mm-hmm. if you want to give them multiple attempts, you can say like, OK, every attempt, this is this is what's going on. This is how the the pressure here is going to increase. You know, you're you're running out of time to do something either literally as in there's a deadline that that you're not going to have enough time to meet or um or sort of in a more vague sense of the the danger is is getting closer um and and to to really like put the heat on the the players to let them know that like oof this is going to be tough <laughs> you know it's it's getting bad for you yeah. guys <laughs> yeah yeah, because once the once the failing starts, and uh, especially like, because I've been in there, I've been there when you have those uh, uh, those skill challenge dog piles, where yeah. somebody fails, I'm like, well, let me try it. Well, let me try it. Let me try it. And you just imagine everyone at the party taking their trying their hand at whatever it is, getting through a door, or whatever, trying to lift a thing, like, and you're just like, how, like. Seriously, like you as the DM are who are the, the, the invisible observer just sitting back going like these freaking idiots. You know, like right. but that that's on you though. If yeah, you're just gonna the let them yeah. do that. Yeah, I don't let them do that. Then guess what? That's gonna make a lot of noise. It's like you said, it's gonna take a lot of time, and now things should start come sniffing around the corner. And like yeah. and that's they they should hear that. They should hear the approaching Absolutely. hounds or whatever however whatever yeah. your your yeah. your your yeah. your your danger that is encroaching is mm-hmm. like this is this is on you as the dm to to keep that drama up so it's not just like a silly like slapstick like trying to open the thing 
Everybody's trying right. to open a pickle jar and just can't. It just you know? can't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, and, and like to to move just slightly, sort of adjacent to that, where where it's not like necessarily like a dangerous environment or, or an adventure location. Like in a social context, it could be that the increasing the pressure is is that the person you're trying to convince their patience is running out. Like they mm. they are starting to think less of you. They are they are starting to become less receptive. Like you have, you can try again if you would like, but the, the stakes for failure increase with each failure. You know, the first time it's like, oh yeah, mm -hmm. you know, they, they're not receptive to your per attempts at persuasion or they're not buying this lie that you're selling. You could stop and try a different way or you could keep going. And if you keep going, if you fail the second time, th the consequences are gonna be that much greater. You know, oh, you failed a second time. Yeah, they're really annoyed now. They really seem like that they're not seeing through, you know, they're seeing through your bullshit. They, they're not buying it at all. Do you keep going mm -hmm. or do you try something different? And so, like, it shows you how you can use these techniques in tandem to give the players options so that the game doesn't stall out and the situation constantly changes so that they have new information to make new decisions and, uh, you yeah. know, work towards their goals. Yeah, because, you know, you can ramp up the pressure, but if they do keep just banging their head against that wall, now is when the DM, uh, you can put them in danger. Like, yeah. that's there's a, there is a difference. Like, applying pressure to kind of get them to, to try something different or, or get around the obstacle another way is one thing, but actually, like, putting them in danger on a roll. Now, this mm -hmm. is where I think th this last point is something that, like, I think a lot of people are expecting. Uh, yeah, especially yeah. like picking a lock and you roll a one. Well, now a trap door opens. That's one way you can right. do that. It's a very simple, uh, brutish way. But, you know, putting them in danger is is a way, though, that you can like, hey, guess what? There are consequences um, yeah. <laughs> to that one uh, or that failure. It doesn't Whatever matter. It is, what. yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, danger is a is a great way is a great motivator. <laughs> Oh, yeah, absolutely. It changes the situation, introduces new information that they have to deal with. It's a new obstacle. And the fun part is, is it doesn't have to necessarily be tied to the character that attempted the, uh, you know, the action mm. and failed. It could, the danger could be put on another character right now you be careful with that not every player appreciates that not every it's not appropriate for every situation or group but it is an option right um so having failure putting a character in a vulnerable spot like that it is sort of the the ultimate uh, escalation but it's always it's it's an option for you and in many ways given the context of whatever situation the players find themselves in or, or the scenario that you're running like danger might be the natural logical sort of organic consequence for a failed attempt uh depending on how dangerous it is and the the, the sort of the the threat that the danger poses i might be very explicit with this in you know in an out of character metagame level and just be like hey th this is dangerous your character your characters are in a real tough spot failure on this role might lead to catastrophic mm -hmm. consequences. It might make things very, you know, very much more difficult uh, for you in further attempts. Um, and, and to let them know that before the dice are rolled so that they have a choice uh, in whether to, you know, continue what they're doing and make the attempt or maybe seek another way. Um, mm -hmm. But another way to sort of put them in danger is to escalate the stakes, you know, to go back to, you know, trying to convince an NPC or to lie to them. It could be that, you know, a failed attempt or repeated attempts uh, that, that result in failure, like they change the nature of this particular conflict. You know, initially the social conflict was about, can you persuade this NPC to, to something? Can you change their mind about something or make them believe a certain, uh, you know, lie or, or falsehood? And failure escalates it, it is no longer a social conflict it's now a combat encounter uh or mm -hmm. something like that you know it, it it changes the nature of what is at stake with this die roll or, or whatever and in that sense it is kind of a nuclear option <laughs> you know like yeah. you failed to get past this obstacle now the there's a cave in or you trigger a trap or something like that um but in terms of our purpose Right, in terms of what we're trying to accomplish by having failure be something other than nothing happens, it it really kicks things up, and and it might be what mm -hmm. your group needs uh, to to like 
re-energize them to to get them focused on something and and to have them like deal with this threat before reapproaching it I, i'm sure everybody's heard the the advice of like you know when you don't know what to do have someone kick in a door and start shooting or something like it's some sort of like noir uh you know it, it, advice for writers or something i forget who uh, uh gave it but i but, it's but in yeah, a similar a vein this, right the door in yeah, yeah. A, faction a faction kicks the door. Kicks the door Someone kicks the door. Firing. <laughs> right. Ninjas yeah, attack, yeah. whatever, you know. Um, because it's immediate. It's danger. It, it, players know what to yeah. do when, they're, when their characters are in immediate danger because they usually have a lot of tools at their disposal. Um, there's usually a, a, a heightened sense of, like, this is the thing we have to deal with. And then, like, after that's passed, because the context has changed, you can come to that original task that they failed at from a different perspective. Um, and and uh, hopefully find a way to, to move past it or use new information to approach it in a different mm -hmm. way. Yeah, I, I had something similar to this in my Breath of the Fall campaign because it is a city suspended over a giant expanse below that they don't know how far down it goes. But in one of the first adventures, Emma's character rolled a one during an earthquake, which meant I was like, yeah, you fall, and the safety systems that they have in place in this in this town, which are a bunch of safety nets, yeah. don't work. And so her character fell. And then the thing is, is she rolled a one there, and she failed three times total. And like I think two Thanks. of them were ones. So it was just yeah. her trying to stop her her character's fall and just keeping falling. And which yeah. the thing is, is like yeah, if you hit the bottom, that's really bad. But like the bottom's a long way down there. So what it became was just like a reconnoiter mission. Basically, she just yeah. kind of reconned the 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 <laughs> area directly below where y'all were gonna go anyway, just ahead of time. And right. it finally. <laughs> Their character caught and they took some damage, like stopping that fall. But it was a way, like, no, this is dangerous. And if you don't stop yourself, you're eventually going to not be able to stop yourself. So, you know, uh, but that was yeah. like, I was a little scared there, especially after that second yeah. one. But, you know, it became a skill right. challenge at that point of fall. <laughs> Yeah. And depending on how deadly of a game you're running, you know, what the consequences for failure are, or, you know, like the ultimate, you know, mm -hmm. can you lose a character? Can you lose control of them? Um, danger might mean many different things. Moving beyond thinking of failure as like the character is incompetent. They don't do what uh, they set out to do. Nothing happens. You're stalled. No progress, whatever. You could say like, these are all the ways which could explain failure or act as a consequence for failure and are also ways that you can give new information so that the context and situation changes and the players have more resources at their disposal the next time they need to tackle this thing. And that is what gives an RPG a sense of dynamism and, and a fast paced mm -hmm. and, and of of a constantly changing environment of information for the players, right? That's the level we're talking about here. So that things aren't mm -hmm. boring and static. They don't come back to that same obstacle and go, gosh, well, I, we now have like less resources than what we had the first time, no new information, and we have to approach this thing the same way. There's no alternatives. That is a recipe for player engagement or di sorry, disengagement That is a recipe for mm -hmm. players checking out as they go like, gosh, we, we didn't accomplish this the first time when we were in a better circumstance, but how, how are we going to do that now? Give them mm -hmm. something turn the failure uh, in, into something useful and interesting without having it be just like, oh yeah, you succeed anyway, because you know, we don't want you to fail and you know, em embrace failure, embrace the unknown, embrace the fact that the dice could go wildly out of your favor, but it doesn't have to ruin the game. It doesn't have to completely right. stall things or, or, or derail your game or whatever. Um, yeah. yeah. You just gotta fail better, man. Just gotta fail better, come on. And when you fail better, your parent, your players will feel better. So. <laughs> Jim, can I be a dragon in our next campaign? I mean, well, yeah. What do you want to do with it? <laughs> <laughs> be, be, be a dragon. <laughs> Just be a dragon. Be a dragon. <laughs>